What is poppin' y'all? Welcome back to another YouTube video, and today we're taking a look at another uh, anime news video? Anime film review? I don't know which one to call it, anime or film, because we're taking a look at the new anime film called Suzume, which is... came out in cinemas, and I do believe you can watch it on Crunchyroll or Funimation, because they've now merged, so it is like the Crunchyroll Funimation thing. I don't know what they're currently calling themselves, I still think it's under Crunchyroll, but I think they're really cool, and... Anyway, that's how I watch this movie, so definitely go check it out, and it is very weird. I went into this movie expecting a movie about doors and leading to different dimensions, and a dimension hopping movie, and that's not what this film is about, unfortunately. You don't travel different dimensions, like going through all these different doors, but it is still really cool. And we're going to go into what Google has to say about the movie first, and then we'll go into the actual review of the movie. So... Let's get into it. Google says, oh fuck, this is a big one. As the skies turn red and the planet trembles, Japan stands on the brink of disaster. However, a determined teenager named Suzume sets out on a mission to save her country. Able to see supernatural forces that others cannot, it's up to her to close the mysterious doors that are spreading chaos across the land. A perilous journey awaits as the fate of Japan rests on her shoulders. To be fair, that is the most interesting blurb, interesting movie synopsis that I've seen for one of the more recent movies that I've watched, and it is pretty accurate. So I'm going to quickly run you through the story very basically, just so you get the gist of it, but I still do recommend you go watch it. I still do want you to go watch it and not just take this as gospel. So... How this movie starts is we have this girl called Suzume riding her bike to school and she runs into this dude who's like, hey, do you know any um, ruins around here? Any like abandoned places? And she's like, yeah, just one over the mountain. Go check it out. And he's like, okay, thank you. She gets red, red in the face and she's like, oh, fuck, I thought he was hot. I thought he was cute. And she continues to go to school. She then runs away and decides, you know what? I want to follow that guy. I, I want to tell him because I think he's hot and she opens a mysterious door which has an other world inside it because she gets to the ruins before he does and she's looking for him she sees a door she opens it it leads to another world she tries to run through but it won't let her and she ends up stumbling across this cat like totem which she pulls out the ground and then she's like shit i'm late for school she then gets to school at around lunchtime and her friends are like hey Nice of you to join. And she looks out the window and sees this giant red smoke beam. And no one else can see it. So it grows throughout the day. And she runs to go and stop it or see what it is. And it's a giant smoke beam coming out of the door. She sees the handsome guy trying to close it. She runs over to try and help him. And, you know, he gets cut in the process. Trying to close this door. It hurts his arm. They manage to close it and lock it up. So... She invites him to her house to heal him up and get him some, something to eat. They then go back to her house and he explains his whole situation. Hey, I'm a door closer. I'm the one that stops all this. How can you see it? What did you do? And she's like, I didn't do anything. And then the cat shows up and turns the guy into a chair. And then they chase this cat. They chase this cat fucking everywhere. This cat chases them across a boat to another part of Japan, they chase them through the streets, and chase them into a ferris park, like an old timey ferris wheel, which they almost fall off and die, they go to a brothel, I believe it's called, I could be wrong with that, but it's like a, a sexy bar, and they continue their journey throughout Japan, traveling to Tokyo, where the biggest worm appears, and they jump on it, they try and stop it, the cat's on it, and the cat's like, hey, I'm no longer the totem, it's you, which he said before, and the dude didn't fucking listen, and now he realizes, oh, I am the totem, I need to sacrifice myself to stop this worm, she's like, no, you can't, and he ends up sacrificing himself to stop the worm, because if he doesn't, they're all gonna die, the cat then saves her from the huge fall back down to Tokyo from riding the worm, she then sets out on a mission to save him and go back to the spirit realm. And she gathers her auntie and his best friend. They go on a long road trip. They see another cat. And 
the girl gets angry at the little at the little white cat, and the little white cat then starts to lose its strength, lose its power, get really skinny, really wet, and really disgusting looking. Like it looks really unhealthy. And then she says she needs the help of the cat. The cat feels loved and gains its health back. And then they go to the spirit realm. Each one of them, you know, the cat turns back into the totem, and the guy returns back to his normal self. They both get a totem each, and they try and stop the chair. They, like, slam into the worm and set it to rest. And then we have them go back to the real world, and that is pretty much where the movie ends. So, that was the quick run-through of the movie. I hope you all understood it. But, anyway, going on to what I think about the movie is, I thought it's pretty cool. Um, the concept was really interesting. I didn't get what the worm was. They never really explained what it was. It was just like an evil entity from the spirit realm that was trying to get out. Again, don't know why it was trying to get out. I don't know what it was trying to do. I could have just missed it, but I felt like it didn't explain it well because I was pretty focused on the movie. I, I didn't pick up my phone once. I was like solidly focused on the movie because it was that good. The animation style was fucking beautiful. The water was incredible. The food looked good as well. And the character design was really nice. I liked the guy's character design. He looked really cool. He had like the nice flowing luscious locks. But he was a chair for most of the movie. He was a fucking chair. They they had a really good character design for him, but for th like three quarters of the movie, he was a chair. He was a fucking chair. Great character design. Fucking on point. Nailed it. He was a chair with three legs, by the way. He was missing a leg. Don't know how he managed to run around. Don't know how he managed to move. Don't know how he managed to talk, either. Because he still spoke. And people could hear him. People could see him. But, again, the chair didn't have a mouth. So how was he talking? Was he telepathic? I don't know, but it was interesting. Especially because it was a chair. We see characters get turned into stuff all the time in anime, but a chair's a new one. I mean, we've reached new heights with the new anime coming out called The Time I Got Reincarnated Into a Vending Machine. So a chair isn't too far-fetched, to be fair. But we have this girl who is now a closer, and she falls in love with this guy over the course of the movie, it's it's basically a love story with a couple of bits of magic in there. I thought the cat was really cool, and she was really mean to that cat for no reason. I understand that she like had to sacrifice the other dude, but the cat just wanted love. The cat just wanted attention. The cat just wanted someone to love it. And it wasn't a bad cat. It didn't do anything wrong. I'm on the side of the cat. The cat did nothing wrong, and the cat was adorable. I fucking loved that cat. And he got treated like shit for no reason. And I cried when the cat sacrificed himself. I never cried when the dude sacrificed himself. I liked the dude. He's one of my favorite characters. Don't get me wrong. But but the cat stole the show. The cat was fucking goaded. And such a cute character design. The massive eyes. And he was just so playful and so sweet. And he just, he just wanted attention. He'd been locked up as the totem for the past hundred past thousand years, I don't know how long, but it was a, a long time, so he's had no interaction, and he's been struggling with this fight against the worm, and the first time he gets freedom is because this girl set him free, and the girl said she liked him, thought he was cute, and he just wanted to spend time with her. He wanted to be free and be loved and be cared for and be actually cherished instead of being used as this totem to keep the worm at bay. I felt bad for the cat, man. That cat did nothing wrong. That cat deserved the fucking world. I, I, I love that cat. I'm not a cat person. I will be honest. I fucking hate cats. Um, I like dogs, though. Dogs are adorable. But this cat, this cat, this this cat can have anything it wants. I will feed this cat fucking tuna. I will get it a little collar with a bell. Fucking love this dude. He speaks as well. It's a talking cat. What's not to love? Anyway. I, I focus too much on the cat. I'm sorry. I'm very passionate about the cat. I, I thought that I thought the cat got did dirty, but the story was really interesting as well. The way that you can see the spirit realm through the doors, but you can't actually get there. I thought that was a really cool technique and how you could see it and how it tried to trick you into thinking you could go inside it so it could kill you so you could actually go there because it's like a realm of the dead. It's the... I forgot what they called it, but it had a special name. 
And I'm going to be honest, it was a really cool premise. It is one of the better anime films that I've seen, and it could probably rival a Studio Ghibli one. It doesn't have the cool animals, and the cool sort of sidekicks as the Studio Ghibli one does, but it has a good enough story to be like a Studio Ghibli one. Um, I am going to be watching The Boy and the Heron very soon, so stay tuned for another review on that, uh, another anime film review, whichever one I decide to put this in. And that's pretty much all I have to say about the movie. Animation was great. It was so beautiful. The colors were incredible. The water, the fucking water is gorgeous. I don't know. This, people took a lot of time and effort into this one. I think the animation on this is better than what was in Jujutsu Kaisen. I, I, I gotta be real. This, this animation was genuinely stunning. And as I was watching it, I was just seeing how fucking beautiful it was. The use of colors here was genuinely perfect. Animation, man. It's just so beautiful. And it looks a lot better than real life. I'm gonna be honest. I, I would rather live in this world than here. Because looking out my window right now, it's fucking grey everywhere. It is just grey. There is no colour anywhere. After watching anime, I always look outside. It's like, our world is so colourless and boring. But anyway, back to, th back to the rating. I'm going to give this a 9 out of 10. Literally because I thought the cat was done dirty and I, and I hated the, like, how the cat was done dirty. That was my only nitpick with it. And I feel like the the worm could have been explained a little bit more, but that's pretty much it. That's my review. I would watch it again. It's great. I do recommend it. I hope you do go watch it for yourself. I cannot praise this movie enough. So other than that, I hope you all enjoyed. See you all next one. Have a nice day and goodbye. Stay home and stay safe.